Gonna faced her Goliath, and she beat it. You're going to have to face your Goliaths, and they're going to come. And here's what I promise you about every Goliath. Every Goliath is going to trash talk you. Every Goliath you face is like, this is the one you're not going to beat. Yeah, you might have been able to go executive, but you'll never hit the next rank because I'm a big, mean Goliath. Ah! I'm so big and bad, you won't touch me with a 10-foot pole. Whatever it is. Man, I've got this job, and I'm trying to do this, and, and it's so busy, I don't think I can handle it. And the answer is you can handle it with better thinking. You've got to be able to confront the Goliaths. Here's what happens. Most of us, we get this Goliath in our life. This thing, we want to win, but we're scared of this Goliath. So what we do is we get busy, but not productive. And how you get busy and not productive is you start straightening the, it's like the Titanic sinking, but you're busy straightening the deck chairs, right? We're busy, man. I'm really busy. Look at this. But it's all stuff that doesn't matter because until you dress this Goliath, you're not moving on. You're like, well, I'm circling the Goliath. Woohoo! How you doing, Goliath? Okay, man, look at me go. You gotta knock him down to move on. I don't know what your Goliath is, but you do. Listen, you live with yourself 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, people come to me after I've known them for an hour. Tell me what I need to change. You tell me what you need to change. You've been hanging out with you a lot more than I've been hanging out with you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll listen, we can talk, and I can help try to uh, find some limiting beliefs, but really, I mean, we make the business way more complicated because we're afraid of dealing with Goliath. So we come up with all these intellectual traps and all this other stuff. It's really just like, uh, for example, let me just use a couple early ones. I was scared to death of picking up the phone. I know there's people who have come on, why are you sitting? Man, I'm telling you, I had no problem picking up the phone for work, but all of a sudden when I was calling for my own business, the phone grew to about 300 pounds, it had teeth, and it growled. <laughs> and it scared me to death. But here's what happened. There's something that scared me worse than picking up the phone. I was more scared of being a failure in life. So I thought to myself, either I pick up this phone or I lose. And since I hate losing, I guess I'm going to pick up the phone. I wish I could tell you I picked up the phone and it worked magically ever after, but I picked up the phone and I stunk. I couldn't book a meeting. I mean, I was like, oh, please. I mean, you talk, you want to talk about bad posture. You want, I mean, I couldn't even talk without my voice cracking. Like, is there something wrong? No. As I'm drinking water. <laughs> Everything's fine. Why? <laughs> and then when I fail, I'd get off the phone. I'd pace around the last more. I'm like, this can't be me. I mean, what is so, this is ridiculous. How come I'm having such a hard time? And then I'd read a little bit more, and I'd listen to the contact and CDs a little bit more. I'm like, well, doggone, I'm violating every principle here. <laughs> P-D-C-A. Plan, do, check, and adjust. If you're going to win in life, you may have a different name for it, but it's P-D-C-A. In engineering or in any type of test, you run the test, so you can get the data so you can predict the next move you should make. Now that was totally designed for engineering and study, testing of parts and products. But as I started getting into this business, I went back and revisited that discussion and I thought about it from the perspective of networking. Because in networking, every time you do an action, it's a test. And based upon that result, you have to make a prediction of your next move. People ask all the time, I said, now Oren, who mentored you when it comes to building your business? And how'd you learn to do this and how to do this? I say, well, I didn't have a mentor, but I had a PDCA process that I ran daily. Now, doesn't it make sense if somebody has, let's say that I started and I was a zero out of 100, and somebody else started and they were a 50 out of 100. You say, well, certainly the 50 out of 100 is going to advance to 100 out of 100 much faster, and they're going to be a big rank much faster. Oh, but there's another part of it. Let's say I might have been a zero, but I was willing to run a PDCA daily, facing a Goliath every day. Every day I'm willing to face a Goliath. 
And somebody who's a 50 is willing every year to face a Goliath. Now who do you think is going to get to 100 to 100 fastest? You realize when I got started, it took me five and a half years to get 200 people. There were people that got started a year and a half after me that had thousands showing up to events in 19 months. And I'd have to get there, you know, during recognition, I'd have to sit there, and they'd come around, and they've been in for 19 months, they got 1,500 people here in their diamonds and this, and I'm like, If you can help them solve their problem, 